crafters so we are going to be making some stickers today now my daughter is having a construction themed birthday party and I wanted to go ahead and find some cute little clip art some SVGs maybe some fonts so on creative fabrica I'm just typing into the search construction and we will see what comes up I mean we have tons of different cute options she's really into excavators right now so let's pull in this one that looks so cute We'll do this one. So you're going to click on it and then select download. Now let's say you really like this, maybe the creator, the way they design it's super unique. You can go down here and see what their name is, you know, their profile. And you can actually view profile to see other ones that they've created. If they have like a similar kind of design that they do, like you can see here, another one they did. And that's a great way if you really like the way the artist is creating their files and you want to see what else they have, scroll on down and you can actually view their whole profile. So I'm going to go through and click on a few more. Let's see. Ooh, I like the ones with the dinosaurs. That's super cute. The most common question I get on any of my videos, TikToks, any craft Cricut videos that I make is, is where do I get my graphics and my fonts from? So I always say the same thing. I've been doing it for over a year now. And actually you are the ones who suggested that I check this out and oh my goodness, Crafters Paradise. So I use a website called Creative Fabrica and that's where I get all of my SVGs, my PNGs, my graphics, fonts, cut files, literally anything you can think of they have on there. So they actually give you access to millions of graphics, which is super cool, and it has a free trial. So the free trial is what I started off with. I fell in love with it, and then I ended up just getting the subscription, and it's been over a year, and I'm still doing it every single month. So the really cool thing is I was able to get some type of discount code, so it actually renews at the end if you decide to renew it and continue it of your free trial. It is $9 a month, which is a huge savings. If some of you have it right now and you're kicking yourself because you're paying $29 a month, yes, I know. You can actually get it to renew at $9 a month with the code that I have, so I'll leave that down below just click on the link and it will automatically apply that code for you. Now, the reason I use this all the time is because it comes with the full commercial license. So you can use this for personal use or you can sell the designs that you make or you can sell the projects you make with these designs using these fonts instead of purchasing a commercial license for each individual font, cut file, and all those things. If you didn't know, yes, you do need a commercial license to sell anything that is made with any font, any cut file, any of those things. And I have a video talking more about that, which I'll leave right up here for you if you want to learn more about why that is and how to avoid all of those things. But honestly, how I avoid that is Creative Fabrica. And even when I'm not selling it, I use it for my designs like today. A really cool thing is you can also cancel at any time, which I think is super important. You never know how things go, so I love that I have the flexibility. I'm able to just go ahead and cancel it if I need, start it up again, but I highly suggest you try out the free trial. Why the heck not get a bunch of free graphics and fonts? See how you like it, and if you are thinking about doing sublimation, oh my goodness, don't even get me started. We're going to download this one as well. So now that we've downloaded those, we need to go into the file folder. So go into your downloads folder and you're going to see it's in a zipped file format. You'll see the zipper is closed. So what you need to do is right click, select extract all, and then extract. This is going to unzip the file so that you can see there's the PNG, the SVG, you know, whatever other file formats you might need or come available with that design. And you need to do that for all of them to be able to pull them into Cricut Design Space. So once that's done, I am able to hop into Cricut Design Space and get started. The first thing we do over on Cricut Design Space is we are going to the right hand side to start a new project. So I'm going to just get the grid lines back by selecting this little square. If you didn't know, that's how you kind of change the grid lines a little bit. And on the left hand side at the bottom, I'm going to select upload, upload image and browse. Now remember for this project, we are going to be making stickers. So I'm going to find that unzipped file that I have. I'm going to double click on it and I will pull in the PNG format of it. But if you want to do the SVG, I mean, whatever you choose. So with stickers, you want to select complex. If you select simple, it's going to change the look of it a little bit. You can see it changed the colors on a more complex design. It's drastically going to change the colors. So you want to select complex. We don't need to do anything on this page, so apply and continue. And again, we want it to be a print and cut image because if you select cut image, it's quite literally going to just cut the outside silhouette, 
you won't see any of the design and that kind of defeats the purpose for your stickers, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do that step for all of the little vehicles and stickers that I'm wanting to do and then I'll come back when it's time to add it to our canvas. Now it's time to bring in our images. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of the ones that I want to bring in and honestly I'm just going to bring in all of them. We're going to add to canvas. Give it a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and size these down right away so they're easy to work with. I just moved it down to five because I know just from using Cricut Design Space so much that that's going to work. So a couple ways you can do your stickers. I like to create a little bit of an offset, which is kind of like a white background or shadow behind it. My Cricut won't need to cut out each individual little triangle here. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a super thin little offset, even possibly thinner than that. We're going to apply, apply and I'm going to change it to white and that is what I'm going to do there. Now with the offset feature it's going to be hard to tell if I don't change the color so I'm going to make it gray. Let's say you want this fully filled in, this little part you can see peeking out this white portion. It will not let you do this when you are set to print and cut. So you need to select the offset feature you're going to go down and change it to basic cut. You're able to then go in and select contour and fill in those little spots. You can either manually do it or select hide all contours. Now when you exit, you can see it's fully filled in. So I'm just going to change that back to white so you can see a little better. To make it all one print and cut image, you need to highlight over everything on that sticker and select flatten. Now it kind of disappears because the background here is white, but if I change the background, you'll see it better. So let's change it to blue. Now you can see my little sticker with my offset in the background. So I'm going to do the same step for all of these stickers and then I'll be back. Now I've created the offsets that I want for each individual photo. This one I just did black, but all of the other ones are in white. And then I went ahead and duplicated each one because I'm making two separate sticker pages or two sets of them. So now I can go ahead and select make it. Now for myself, I am doing the sticker fully cut out. If you wanted it to be like a sticker sheet, for example, and you wanted it to be on its own and maybe like only one of each type, then you'll go ahead and move them around. So you can move object, select the next page, confirm, and then place it there. So that's another way you can kind of do that and, and move them around when you need to. But for the purposes of this video, I don't need to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just put it back on there. And as you can see, yes, Cricut Print and Cut did extend finally their cut. Yes, it's not all the way because this black border needs to be there. That is the registration marks that your Cricut uses to read where to cut out your stickers. So you do need that part. Now I can go ahead and select continue and I can send it over to my printer. So for that, I'm going to select send to printer. But what I need to do is a few little settings that I just kind of prefer for myself and you do what you want. So I'm going to select this printer. I do have multiple, so I know which one I need to press, but then I'm going to select use system dialog. This is going to open the printer settings to allow me to edit a few things to change the quality of my print. So what I'm going to do is select on preferences and I'm going to change the quality to high. Now that is the only thing that I like to change for my stickers, but if you have a different preference, you go ahead and you do that. This is the sticker paper I'm going to be using today. It is the Koala brand, the best of the best, and I'm going to be doing it in matte. So we're gonna go ahead and load up my inkjet printer with this vinyl sticker paper and get started. I get tons of questions about my whole printer setup here and I answer a lot of them over on TikTok, but if you have any other additional questions that you were kind of curious about or just wanted to know how it works, let me know in the comments and I can definitely go into more detail for you. For the sticker paper, you can see which side is the clear front and back and then just know which way your printer needs to be loaded. So it'll take a little bit longer because of the settings I did, but it's going to start printing. Once it's done printing, you want to go ahead and take it out, but make sure it fully dries. It's going to be a little bit wet still from coming out, especially because I did the high quality print. So it did take a little bit longer, a little bit more ink, but you can see the vibrant colors that it does and it's just super cute. So I'm going to let it 
sit and kind of set for a little bit dry and then we're gonna put it on our mat and cut it out. Now that my little sticker paper is dry, I'm going to put it on my Cricut mat. So just put it on there, make sure it's on there really good. I'm just being careful not to smudge anything. And we're able to go ahead and load it into our Cricut. So our Cricut will do a few things, but first let's press the arrow. And see what happens. So the first thing you'll see is there's going to be a light that's going to turn on while your Cricut is trying to read the registration marks that go all the way along here. So after I actually select the material, which is printable sticker paper in white, it's going to flash the C. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and you will see the light turn on in a moment here. As you can see, the light has turned on and it is now doing its little check to try to read these registration marks all along. Now, if you're having issues with this and troubleshooting it, I do have a video which I'll leave right up here, but I'll also leave it linked down below. Sorry, she's a little noisy, but it's a great way to troubleshoot and kind of fix if your Cricut is not recognizing these marks because Cricut print and cut can be tricky sometimes. You'll see now, it's almost done. When it's done, I won't need to press anything. There you go. It's doing its little thing and it's going to automatically start cutting out. I don't need to touch or do anything. So I really like this feature. It's kind of just does its own thing as soon as it reads it. So I know it can be tricky with Cricut Print and Cut, but don't give up. I promise once you figure it out, it's really easy. And I think a lot of it has to do with the paper. So that's why I recommend the Koala paper. That will also be linked down below because I do have a discount code from them. But it's amazing and oh my gosh, I'm so excited to see how cute these stickers turn out. Perfect for party favors. Perfect, so now that it is done cutting out, I can go ahead and press again the flashing arrow. And we'll take a look at our stickers. I'm so excited. Okay, so a couple ways you want to do this. First of all, you want to make sure you're peeling it away like this. So you flip it upside down and you're pulling your mat away. Try to do it on a flat surface if you can. This is going to ensure that you're not bending your stickers and putting little creases in them. We want flat stickers, am I right? I'm right. <laughs> okay, perfect, so we're peeling it up. Don't worry, your mat is super flexible. As you can see, it's totally fine. So now we have these super cute stickers. Let me just move our Cricut out of the way. Awesome, so here we have our stickers. So I'm going to just kind of slowly pop them out carefully because they're still a little bit attached, you can see. Sometimes it kind of depends on the paper or the design, but sometimes they just come right out. Like this one just almost slides right out. But check how cute this little sticker is. Ah, okay, I'm gonna pop them all out and then we'll take a look at these cute little designs. Check out how cute these little stickers came out. I am absolutely obsessed. So that's how you use Cricut Print and Cut, Creative Fabrica, and that amazing koala paper to create some gorgeous stickers. So I'm gonna make some more fun ones, add them into the kids' goodie bags, and it is going to be a fun little party. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy crafting, bye!